Hello guys and welcome to an Air Tycoon 5 tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how you can quite easily win a game of Air Tycoon uh, 5 if that's what you want or just to become the biggest company possible in this game. <clears throat> Today that's what we're going to be talking about. So we're going to be playing on 24 player hard uh, competition mode and we're going to be using game period 1970 to 2030. The reason I start in 1970 instead of 1960 is the game starts a lot faster and it's a lot less boring basically. You can start in 1960 but you'll have to think of a little bit of a different strategy than what I'm going to show you now. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to select all cities because that's the most interesting. If you think it's too many, uh, select whatever package of cities you want. I recommend more um, because you'll have more to do in the game. And for choosing a hub, um, this isn't Air Tycoon Online, this is Air Tycoon 5, which is an offline game. So you can choose just about any hub in this world and succeed over enough time. But it will be significantly easier, and in this tutorial I'll be using London, if you choose a big hub. London, Paris, Rome, uh, Rome's not that big, uh, never mind that. <laughs> New York, Chicago, um, LA, Tokyo, Beijing, Seoul are all like very very good choices but for the sake of this video i'm going to be starting in my favorite hub london because i believe it is it is the easiest hub to start in so we're going to go ahead and just pick some random things i don't really care about this of course um for tutorial and i need a flag apparently um so yeah what we're going to want to do in this tutorial is like we need to make as much money as possible as fast as possible and kind of somewhat counter logically the best way to do this is not by buying the biggest most expensive most efficient plane but it's actually buying the smallest plane in the tupolev 124 and using the many many purchases of the tupolev 124s to be able to lease 747s um 747s are um in this game highly advantageous to use because they have very good satisfaction uh, which tends to play a pretty important role into the load factors so what you're going to want to do um to get those is use two level one two fours and you're going to want minimum seat pitch and minimum uh and the cell phone service of course and you don't need to worry about any of the upgrades they're mostly unimportant and you're just going to want to put in a huge huge order of two level one two fours <coughs> And on top of the huge, huge order of Tupelo 124s, let's save some money actually, is you're going to want to lease as many 747s as the game will allow. Um, so for example, I think I bought 15 Tupelo, so that should allow me to lease 747s. You're going to want to slightly change your seat layout to something like this, and of course also minimum seats. Um, and then go ahead and order as many as we can so in this case it's four and then we're just going to want to leave the rest of the cash because we don't want to go negative as you see um we will have negative profit for our first two turns before any of our planes arrive uh so boom now our planes have arrived um basically what you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to put all of these planes on route so if we take a look at our planes 19 of them we're going to want to put all of these on route. So I'll be right back when it's done. And I'll show you the routes I choose and then I'll explain why. So welcome back, guys. I think last time I left off, I misspoke a bit. I said make routes, but I kind of meant buy the slots for the routes. Um, and that's because I want to show you guys the route making process. So the fastest way to make routes is to buy the slots, which are instantaneous, of course, and then go ahead and just click make route now. Here's the pricing, leave it on default, and I'll show you why in a minute. And then you'll want to make a preset um, for your route. So for a short range route on a tupelev, it's hard to get high satisfaction. Um, so I go with something very cheap and um, basically not really aimed at satisfaction. So something like this, 50% satisfaction is perfect enough. Um, and then what you're gonna want to do, of course, is just go through and make the routes um and clicking uh the fair so i'll be done uh in a bit but i want to also talk about the kind of cities i choose to make these routes to so these are two beloved one two fours so they have a max range of 1200 um so you can't fly too far so these are obviously short range planes 
<coughs> but the kind of city you're going to want to look to connect to um, is cities which when you add the business and tour together, you get a number similar or above 300. Um, eventually, you're going to want to do all the cities where if you add the two numbers when you click the city, the business and tour up together, you get 200 or so. You're going to want to make those two, but at first, um, you can just use business and tour 300. Now, of course, if you look at London, London has a business and tour combined of 800, which is, of course, a really big city. Um, and in the future, you're going to want to open your new hubs in other cities with the business and tour that add up to high numbers. Probably going to be more than 800 when you do so. So, yeah, as you guys can see, all the routes I'm making when you add the business and tour, um, you get a number above, easily above uh, 300. Now, the reason why I do this, some of them are slightly under 300, but the reason why I do this instead of the biggest cities like Amsterdam, Paris, Frankfurt is those routes are going to get competition. And while that's something which is completely manageable and the fact that your planes will probably still be full, um, I choose not to, uh, I choose not to, to, to do that because then, uh, the AI is likely, likely going to compete with you. And what happens when you do that is when you do pricing, you're going to have to be a little bit more conservative or you're going to have to micromanage it. Um, basically not all of the competition routes will be full while you're basically guaranteed your route will be full if you're running on a monopoly. Um, also, I just want to make that point. I honestly could make those routes because the two pull-ups are going to be a very small percentage of your profit. Most of your money is going to be made from the 747s despite there being a lot less of them. So yeah, the 747s are actually the meat of the strategy and the routes you make with the 747s are actually more important uh so stay in tune for that also in your hub airport you're just going to want to make sure you have enough counters and enough offices uh, i just go with 10 in the first turn because it's not too important whether you have too many or too little but you definitely or it's not important if you have too many but it is important if you have too little um you're gonna want to build the maintenance and you're gonna want to build the fuel slightly later not yet because right now, fuel cost is not your main concern. Um, it doesn't become worth it until you have a little bit more planes, but you will want to eventually build the fuel. Um, yeah, so as we finish up these uh, two blood routes, hopefully I made enough. I think I counted them out correctly. Um, but, you know, I make mistakes. I might have made too many. I might have made too little. <laughs> Look at that. Lisbon is perfectly on 300. Uh, business and tour combined um, and I think we probably have one more uh, Okay, yeah, I counted out one too many and what? I must have misclicked a city that wasn't Stockholm. All right, so now to the more important part What do we want to do with the 747s? We of course have quite a few 747s to use and Yeah, if we take a look at this, what do we want to do with them? Well, what you want to do with your 747s is make stopover routes um, stopover routes are the most overpowered and awesome thing in this game. Um, and you're going to want to make stopover routes between any cities with the 747 that connect to London with London in the middle, um, like this, with any cities with business and tour above 300, literally any of those routes will fill a 747 to 100%. Now, you're going to want to make a new preset, uh, which just has every service for the 747s. Um, this is the most efficient way to use it. Um, so yeah, that is basically what you got, want to do with the 747s. So literally any city. So right now, of course, I'm doing the biggest cities because they'll be full regardless of competition because, um, as I mentioned before, satisfaction plays a large role in the fullness of aircraft and the 747 has one of the highest satisfactions in the game so you can basically compete with the, the ai and you'll have no problem at all when using um a boeing 747 so if you can see here we can go ahead and make just about any route and we'll see how they fill up uh let's see what other routes are good so basically what I'm doing here is I'm trying to make sure 
that my stopover routes get as many schedules as possible. So I'll give you an example. For example, if I do Chicago all the way down to Guangzhou here, um, it looks like I have to buy slots to show you, I will only, I'll get four schedules of plane, which is pretty good. But if I go too far, that will eventually become three. I think not much farther and that will turn to three schedules. Uh, let me see if I can find an example. So if I go Guangzhou to London to Chicago, we know that was three schedules a week. Whereas if I go just a little bit farther to probably like Dallas is enough. So I'll show you guys. Um, yeah, we'll drop down to three schedules. Now that's a, what is that? Like a 25%? No, that's a bigger, that's a 33% difference um, in how many schedules you're going to get. So obviously you're going to want more. Um, so try and make sure your schedules stay on four. Um, and if your schedules become three a week for routes like this, um, try and make sure that they're as far away as possible uh, because then you're not losing so much because then you'd be getting closer to the threshold where you'd switch over to two a week, um, which once again isn't so inefficient. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and just make a couple more stopover routes. Um, let's go ahead and finish this up. And then also I'll be able to show you guys why I didn't price my routes. Um, even though pricing your routes is definitely a good idea don't get me wrong here um so let's go ahead and uh, order more slots in london and finish off our stopover routes with sh something like shanghai why not and let's hope this is three schedules a week oh i ran out of 747s all right that's great so what we're going to do is just order another 747 for the future um here we go next next and order this uh and let's go ahead and skip the month and show you guys what happens so first turn our profit um is pretty bad uh, we're just breaking even so you know uh first turn woes and as you guys can see our 747s are already full so what you're going to want to do is say if your routes are full or let's say uh close to full so that's pretty close to full set the price to 1.3 1.3 is the most efficient price. And then we're going to set anything below this, which is likely a tuple F, right? We're going to want to set the price to 1.16 or 1.15 or anything around this works well for the tuple F. Um, now, if we go ahead and skip the turn, we'll see our profit shoot up and boom, our profit is already 19K, um, which is obviously pretty good. If we go ahead and take a look at our competitors, uh, their profit is just breaking even now, and we're already making 20,000. Isn't that great? Now, our value is still quite low, but as long as we keep using our money to buy more airplanes and continue to do this strategy or use your airplanes in any other efficient way, which is basically uh, for long range planes making stopover routes and for short range planes, uh, connecting to big enough cities from our hub, um, basically we will succeed. Um, so for example, I will schedule this uh, 747 here and you know, I'll just manually price it to 1.3 because I'm only making this as a standalone route and it's not too time consuming. Um, later when your company becomes big, really you won't even want to take this step of pricing your route because you'll have so many plans to do. Um, so yeah. Let's go ahead and pass turns and I'll show you guys how my profit is already massively, massively ahead of the AIs. So basically, yeah, from this point forward, the AIs have 16,000, I have double that. So as long as I keep using my money, my profit will stay above the AIs. Um, anyways, with that in mind, look at all these beautiful routes. Look at this one is even making seven seven K. <laughs> And with that in mind, have fun, guys. Um, make sure you remember to check the business and tour. Uh, and besides that, there's really not too much to know to expand your company. Uh, besides things you might not have already figured out yourself. Um, a few extra tips are over here in the investment tab. I like to set this to four. Um, if you want to compete with the AIs, you want to set it to as high as possible. And if you want to 
uh, only open monopoly routes you can leave it on something very low like two or three and very soon what you're going to want to do is pick your next hub and start investing in it because you'll fill up your main hub quite quickly so those are some extra tips but anyways hopefully you guys enjoyed and learned something and i'll see you guys next time peace